Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today, I'm going to nerd out with data about lids. If you just want to know the answer, the answer is yes. By running a top, you will save energy, your tanks will run warmer, you won't have jumping fish, and you'll have less humidity. Done. Easy. If you just take my word for it, you'll be better off for it. Now, if you want to see all the data on how I got there, that's where you stay tuned right now. And so... I started out on this quest a couple years ago going, I think it makes a difference. I see it in the store. I see it at home, but I don't have data. And so about six months ago, I started buying Yolink temperature probes that can go underwater. And we had a hub. And so I would start just logging, you know, lots of, lots of data, lots of probes, lots of things going on. And what I set up test number one as, that wasn't as scientific, it was my 10-gallon guppy tanks. And the tank all the way on the right, no top at all. The tank all the way on the left had a top. And we put a probe in each one. And by doing that, we could then compare and see, was it making a difference? And it turns out that a full tight-fitting lid, including the back strip, all of that, would raise the temperature by about 3 degrees. Now, personally, I like to leave my lids open about 3 inches because I'm feeding so many tanks. I don't like opening and closing them all the time. That meant I lost one of the degrees in gain. And so for this whole thing, by the way, we'll be talking Fahrenheit. So I got two degrees warmer by having basically 90% of a lid, um, where the full lid got me three degrees. And if you have no lid, obviously no gains there. Uh, I did test about half a lid. That was about one-ish degree. I think there's a lot more to play there with some evaporative cooling and more air, more surface area, you're not trapping the heat, that kind of stuff. So that led to, well, I need to test this more because no one really is just believing when I go a top three degrees to me is huge in a fish room. That's the difference in a fish store between you sweating and wanting to leave or you being comfortable and the fish being comfortable. And so I set out, I bought more sensors. Overall, we used five temperature sensors outside and we used two CASA Wi-Fi timers with built-in energy monitoring. I also bought for this project two 300-watt Eheim heaters off Amazon at the same time, same batch, all of that. Uh, so we're into this project to, to get this answer at yeah, 300-ish dollars roughly. And so, and about 45 days worth of logging data to be able to present the spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet, as you can see on your screen right now, has the high temperatures, the low temperatures, the averages, and the maximum spread. So that's what, you know, the first four columns are for all of the totes. The totes or the temperatures and the probes that we had, we had just the outside temperature. So a probe just sitting right next to the totes going, what is the temperature today? High, low, all of that, logging it. Then we had one tote that was not with a lid and not heated. That was basically our control for those ponds. Like, hey, what does it do if we do nothing? And then we had covered but not heated. So what does it do if I just put a lid on it? Then we had, we're not going to put a lid on this, but I am going to use a heater because maybe you've done that scenario. I know I have. And then the final one was, what if we use a lid and we use a heater? What does that actually mean? And so we can see here that basically by just having water in the totes, and I've got a little bit of insulation, three quarter inch uh, foam from Home Depot around them, we can see that uh, we do stay warmer than the outside temp. Naturally, water holds temperature, so as it gets cold at night, it's going to hold some of the, the heat from the day. I should say this spot where these totes are don't really get heat uh, or don't get direct sunlight. They do, however, get 88 degree water, water changed in once a day. So you're going to, on some of these other screenshots from the phone, you're going to see these spikes happen every day. Uh, but that's what I would do here in the water change. My water change in this, the studio here, the fish room, also is warmer than they typically just run. Because I, if I'm going to change water, let's use a really efficient water heater and heat them up a little bit. Um, so you're going to see that. Now, where do we start? We start uh, with 
the maximum spread. So the coldest times at night and the coldest or the hottest times during the day, the averages over the last 30 days would be 21.78. So that means, you know, the average 57 degrees high and the low being 35. And we kind of average it out to like, hey, you're halfway in there, right? But what are the ponds doing? So the pond that doesn't have any uh, lid or heat, it's getting almost four degrees warmer just by, you know, the water changes happening basically. And it's staying about 13 degrees warmer, right? Than the cold air temp. So, okay, it's retaining a lot of that heat. And the average is 54 degrees. And so the deviation, or not the deviation, but the spread between those two is only 12.6 degrees. So pretty good. Like just, just by having a little bit of foam around the pond and the water holding temperature, we've only got a 12 degree uh, spread. Now, if you're thinking like, well, if that's 80 degrees and it drops down to 68, like, yeah, that might be too much for your fish room. And that's why we might want to run heaters or lids. Okay. And so if we go to covering it without, you know, covering it without a heater, we see, in my opinion, big gains, just a lid alone. Wow. We get a lot of, you know, benefit for the investment of money and time. And so we can see here that our highs are almost 10 degrees, just warmer, right? And then we see that our lows though, are more than 10 degrees. They're 14-ish degrees. And so the average temperature is 12 degrees warmer by just putting a lid. Nothing else changed. By just installing a tight-fitting lid, 12 degrees warmer than without. Now, in your fish room, you might be going, well, we're not going to get that cold. You're right. I only saw about a three-degree difference. However, still very impactful. And so what we see is the, the variance between the highs and the lows, they keep going down. So outside, we were at 21. We go down to 12 by just putting water in a, in, a, in a tank, basically. We go down to basically 8 by putting on a lid. So there's only 8 degree difference. And so if you were keeping it at 80 and only went down to 72, like, wow, that's getting pretty good. Now, the next one is there's no lid but we did put a 300 watt heater in it, okay? And so, depending on how cold you're gonna get, that 300 watt heater probably can't keep up. And in fact, it can't some of the time. So we can see here, even though it's set to 70, our highs would be 73 degrees during the day because again, we're bringing in that warmer water and we do some water changes. There's gonna be a little bit sometimes if you get an outlier day, we had a couple outlier days that were a bit warmer than uh, normal here. And so, we saw the average was 69.52 degrees. And if you were doing stuff outside, that's breeding fish year round basically, but it does come at a cost. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. We can see that the spread of temperature drops to 5.76 or six. So we get another gain by basically, you know, using a heater, an electronic device that goes, hey, when it gets cold, turn on, warm it up. Yes, are we losing heat? We definitely are. And we'll be able to compare that because we'll look at the energy usage. Now, I said earlier, using a heater and a top clearly was going to be the best method to, to maintain temperatures. And we see that here. We see we get a little bit warmer during the day to 74.84. We see that the low only drops to 70 instead of 67. And we see the average being 72 degrees. The variance between the highest highs and the lowest lows in, you know, on the average on, on 30 days was only four and a half degrees roughly, you know, depending on if you want to round up, okay, five degrees. But if you were to go from 75 to 80 and that was the, the highest highs and the lowest lows, that's pretty darn good in a fish room. And what you're going to see in a fish room is you're actually going to see much tighter tolerances in my tanks. I actually see that it's within a couple of degrees. And so now we used heat to get to those high highs. How much more money are you going to have to pay if you don't run lids? Because there's a lot of people that might heat the room like me. 
There's a lot of people that might use individual heaters but don't have lids. Maybe running a rimless tank and it's an aquascape, right? What we see is by putting in my rate of power, you know, how many, how many cents do I pay per kilowatt? And how many kilowatts do we use, which we used quite a bit in this tank, right? So I can see here we used 85.7 kilowatts so far in the month of November. And that cost me $9.42. And if you had one aquarium, ah, don't worry about it. It's one aquarium. But if you had a whole fish room or six ponds outside and you wanted them all to be warm, you can imagine I run between the ponds in this about 32 tanks or, or ponds or whatever. You 32 times that and all of a sudden that's over $300 a month just in a heating bill for your aquariums, right? And so you might be going, wow, that's a lot. What if I could tell what if I told you you could cut that in half by just installing lids? And so I will show you that next. Uh right here. I gotta find it. Uh yep, here we go. 38 kilowatts, or said easier, four dollars and eighteen cents so far this month. So that's half. You save 50% of your heating bill by just installing lids. Now, lids come with a cost. You either got to go and get some made at a glass shop, which I did for my 10-gallon tanks, or you can get the twin wall polycarbonate from Home Depot, which I did, and I showed you guys in videos how I cut it up, and uh, you can install that. And I use that at the store. We use it all over the place, right? And so by doing that, those one-time fixed costs, though, Cutting your power bill in half month after month after month, and fish rooms tend to run for years. It's really going to save you some money. And that's not even talking about a future video where we talk about, well, what about humidity and how much does it cost to run a dehumidifier? And yeah, we can't be growing black mold on the walls and all that, but it pays even more dividends. So then I wanted to ask the question, right? We're looking at the data. You know, the nerds are putting their thinking caps on going, okay, well, What's the most efficient thing to run? Because sure, I can spend a million dollars and keep this thing at 100 degrees all day long, no problem. But where does the efficiency drop off? Usually in life, most times there's a, a spot where you're getting 98% of the benefit with 50% of the cost or something like that. And the last 2% make you go broke. And so what we can see here, we've got the baseline, which is just the outside temperature, right? So by merely using water, which... We use water a lot in greenhouses. By just filling things with water, it'll maintain temperature well. So water has its own maintained temperature properties, right? And then I skinned it with uh, the three-quarter foam. That is 30%, basically. 30% of the energy I'm going to retain or, or the basically narrowing the highs and the lows, the, the big swings, you can achieve 30% less temperature swings by just using water and that foam. All right? Now, if you go and you put a lid on it, you will then get 77.78% efficiency. So by maybe spending 20 bucks, you will then have a lid that will get you 78% of the way there of being as efficient as you could possibly be. And that's why I always tell people, just use a lid. This doesn't factor in how many fish could be jumping. This doesn't factor in the humidity, but even just power savings and heat retention in general, 77% there. Now, if you don't use a lid and you go, well, I'm just using a heater. I got a rimless tank and I like the way it looks. By paying... In this instance, the 300 watt heater, the $9.42 for 23-ish days, that'll get you 89% of the way there, as efficient as you could be, right? You're going to pay your way through it, retain that heat by heating it. You're not even retaining it, you're just heating your way through it. And what we see here actually is, even though it was set to 70, there were times in the pond it can't keep up. The lowest it hit was 67.46, so... 
it might, and really, it can't even do the job. If the fish would have died below 70, these fish would have died. Um, I don't think you'll run into as much of those extremes in your fish room, and so that's why I still think it works. And then obviously, by using a heater and using the top, that's the 100%. You can't, you can't really get much more than that. Um, and you're going to see here that, yeah, it costs you four bucks a month and it'll get you there. Now, if you like these types of, you know, data nerd videos, let me know if you've got other ideas for experiments that you've done or want to see done, leave them in the comments. And, uh, I keep, I plan to keep making more of these types of videos. You might look at this one right here, which was diving into cancer filters, making them as efficient as possible. That was pretty nerdy. Used a lot of data there, but. I was able to double the flow of my canister filters.